Hello everyone. In this episode, I'd like to show you how to rig something extremely simple, just a plane that kind of bends in the middle, forward and back. That's, that's all we're going to do. And the purpose of this is to show you how to do rigging from scratch manually without the figure setup tool in DAS Studio. I have a video that shows you how to use a cylinder or how to rig a cylinder with the figure setup tool with face groups from which you can then infer the bones and it kind of makes it easier for larger figures to get started. But we can do this entirely from scratch manually. I had a question about this yesterday on my Twitch channel and I thought, hey, I'll show you how this works. So it's not gonna be something super exciting, but we're gonna go and create ourselves a primitive plane and it'll be just a one meter by one meter plane and let's give it three divisions so that's three by three divisions and we're going to make that not y positive we're going to make that z positive so that it stands up like so that's really all there's to it you know what i should have done is either make it make it an even number of divisions so let me go and do this again sorry <laughs> delete create primitive and instead of three divisions we're going to give it four divisions it could just be two divisions really it doesn't matter it just so that the top bit here these eight faces they're going to be the ones that are going to be bending down go left and right basically so i'm going to go and select it and you'll notice that i currently don't have any bones so the first thing that we need to do is prepare this thing for rigging and that happens up here under edit object and then there's this category called rigging that only has one sub entry that's called convert prop to figure and as soon as we do that the first bone is going to be created and we need that so that this is no longer an object that it's you know it's going to be turned into a figure that has that bone hierarchy so let's do that and we'll see that we have a little dialogue that pops up and uh, we're just going to use the first option here triax weight mapping that's cool inherit skeleton from parents also fine we're just going to go use the defaults and click accept and then nothing seemingly changes in the viewport but lo and behold on the scene tab we now have this thing that's changed from our previous object into something that has a hierarchy and it has a single bone in here. So that's that's already pretty cool. We didn't have that before. So with this in place, I can now go and select the bone and just go over and select my bone editor tool and have a look at that bone. This is the joint editor tool. That's the one I'm going to choose. You can also get there via tools and then just select the joint editor from here. So right now I don't really see the bone and that's just because it's extremely small it's extremely you know tiny in between the red and the green manipulator here in fact you know what I'm going to do is I'll just go and select the figure and just use my universal manipulator tool sorry just uh, should have done that before I'm going to go and bring this to the bottom of the world hierarchy just because yeah I, I like i like doing that so we can see the manipulators in the middle of our plane here if i go and select my bone and go back to my joint editor i can see these two little manipulators here so ideally i'd like for my first bone to be at the bottom this way and then i'll have a second bone that extends from here from the middle point all the way to the top so let's make that bone visible by clicking if you can the green manipulator i don't think i have any luck so i'm just going to go click the red one move it out of the way left click and drag and now we can see that the bone actually expands so it was here before but it's it's now expanded so now i can go and use my green manipulator left click and drag and bring that all the way to the bottom so to the what's the the very bottom where i'd like for that to be I'd like for the bottom part to control or for the bottom bone to control these faces and for the top bone to create to control these faces. So I'm going to go and left click and drag my red manipulator all the way back into the middle like so. So that this is where the first bone is. It's going to be called bone. We're going to rename that in a second. But uh, I need a second bone that starts from here and goes all the way to the top. And that I will do by right clicking on this bone and then I'll say create a child bone that will let me make another bone another little dialog comes up that says how would I like to name the bone and bone isn't a good name for the bone so I'm going to call the top bone top and the bottom bone bottom eventually so I'm going to go and call this one top uh, name is the thing that's being used under the hood whereas label is the thing that we see in the hierarchy here in a moment 
The only other thing that I need to be concerned about is the rotation order. It's currently set to X, Y, Z, but that is not what my previous bone is set to. So the first letter in this rotation order denotes the kind of the first axis and my first bone goes up. So it'll probably start with a Y. I don't really know what but I'd like for this bone to follow the previous bone. I can have a look what the previous bone is called, but sadly I'm going to have to go and hit cancel and remind myself of what that is. So with this bone selected here and with my joint editor tool still selected, let's have a look on the tool settings tab. Very important tab to have that open and have a look at what this bone says. So it's rotation order right here says it's Y, X, Z. And let's go and remember that when we create our child bone so that it just follows the same rotation order. Otherwise, it'll just be, you know, lying flat or going into a direction where our geometry currently doesn't follow. So Y, X, Z, that's what we want. So with my bone selected, I'm going to go and right click on this again and say create child bone. Once again, I'll say top and the rotation order is now following this. So Y, X, Z. Let's do that. Y, X, Z. Hit accept. And there's my second bone. It's already lined up properly. So it's exactly what I want. Great. So we have the bones, but we still need the face groups that tell the geometry what part of itself needs to be associated with which bone, so which bone can control what. And we also need the weight maps that will tell the geometry how much or how little in any given spot can be manipulated by our skeleton. So let's set those things up. So the face groups first. Those are fairly simple on our very simple figure. That'll happen with the geometry editor in Das Studio. And that's this little icon here. Click that. Leave the tool settings open. We're going to need that. If you don't have this icon up here, head over to Tools and select Geometry Editor from here. With that in place, let's have a look at our face groups at the top here. So notice the face groups, we have one that's called default right now, which is which is everything that kind of, you know, that's, that'll be easy for us. And um, we also have a surface called default that makes it slightly confusing. So those are two types of selections on the same object surfaces. That's for materials and we can create and remove and merge them here with the geometry editor as well. But that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in this here. Blender calls these vertex groups and we need to create one group for every bone that we have in our hierarchy. So let's go and choose our selection mode. Marquee selection will do fine. And I'm going to go and left click and drag around all these top polygons here. You can just about see that they're now selected. And if I head over to my face groups again, I can right click on face groups and then choose create face group from selected. Let's do that. Little dialog comes up and I'll call this one top just so that I know what that is. Now we have top and we have default and default is essentially already what I need for the bottom. So I don't need to do anything else. I can just go and leave this uh, on default and just rename that into bottom. Um, I'm going to go and make the selection, clear the selection so that you can see this is the top and this is the bottom. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Double click default, call that bottom, just so that we know what's what. And now we have two face groups here. We need to associate each of these with each bone that we have. And since it's a very simple figure, it's really easy to do. We need to go back to our joint editor tool for that and select each bone and then go and up here to pick the correct selection group for that. So my top bone that's selected right now is set to none. Open that drop down and associate it with the top group. So this is the face group here and this is the bone to which the group is assigned. So it's very logical if you think about it. Let's go and leave that and select our next bone, which is the which is currently called bone. So we're going to go and rename that in a second. It should really be called bottom rather than bone, just so that I can infer what that is later. Um, let's do that quickly. Let's go and right click that bone here on the bottom and hit edit and choose rename node. And that'll go and give this another name. Same dialog as before, which we can now say, well, this is not bone, this is bottom for the node name and the label so that they follow one another. Now I have bottom and top. That's much better. So on bottom, let's go and have a look at the selection group and it is already set to bottom. So that's perfect. So we have bottom and we have top associated with the correct bone now. 
that's perfect. Those are like two out of three puzzles that are now in place. The third thing that we need to talk about is the weight maps. We need them so that when the bone moves, the geometry moves. And in our case, we're just going to go and set them to 100%, but we need yet another tool to make that happen, to associate these things with one another. So the bones are now associated with the face groups. Now we need to create the weight maps for the face groups. And we do that with the weight map tool. That's this one here. That's the little uh, weight node weight brush tool. If you don't have that icon, it's up here under tools, note weight map brush tool. Select that. You don't really have to do anything right now. You can just go and uh, right click on your object. Uh, and because we're in this special new mode, we can just go to weight editing and then choose fill by bone selection group. Since we've associated those, this was now going to mean that if I if I do this and if I go and uh, say I'm going to stick with the top here, select the top, and I'll go and select any of my maps here on the tool settings, I can see that that is filled in properly. So that is true for the X, Y, and Z rotation. So they're all filled to 100%. Red is 100%, blue is, I believe, nothing, and green and yellow, those are kind of in-between values there. You can also smooth those like I've shown you on the cylinder rigging tutorial, but for our purposes, this is fine. And on the bottom, we see the same thing. So the bottom is filled to 100%. That's perfect. So now all we need to do is see if our rigging is actually working. So with the top selected, let's go and switch over to our universal manipulator tool and see what happens when I go and move the top part around like so. It does work. There's just no interactive control in the viewport right now. That's a little bug in Das Studio that is possible to circumvent. Alt click on the slider to bring it back into its default position. Let me just go and save this out, the scene, and call it test plane, I say. And don't compress it, just save it and just load the same scene in again. And then, you know, things are going to be working. So under file, just open recent test plane. Nothing seems to have changed, but the bug is now gone away. So now I can, whoops, <laughs> open this up again, select the top. And now I can see that my plane moves in the position that I thought it should move. So now you can go and set up your limits and you can go and uh, obviously do this on much more complicated figures. But yeah, that is that is that. We've gone and rigged a simple plane without using the figure setup tool. And you can use this, of course, for things like the cylinder. You could go and uh, create the cylinder that I've shown you with the figure setup tool exactly like this. Just set up the face groups and the bones manually. It's only two bones in that case. So you can create as many child bones as you want. But I thought I wanted to put this on tape so that both you and me in a future situation where we probably have forgotten how this works, we can just quickly remember this. There's also a link to an article with written instructions if you prefer those like I do sometimes. So um, have a look at that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.